I want to welcome you back to the 11th hour today. Man, what a time we've already had this morning. Nothing you, you really heard was planned. The Lord brought that tune to me before I got here this morning, that, that drop D chord I was playing and so forth, and said those words. And then from there, it just went where it went. And, um, but today, well, let's pray before we get into this. I get this, uh, this has already been heavy today. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your word. I thank you, Lord God, for your anointing. I thank you for the, for the prophetic breath of heaven that you give us, Lord God, to help us in these times, to outrun king's chariots, to go ahead, Lord, and know that when the rain is coming, to show whose God is God, to show the one true only God. And I thank you, Lord God that there is no other but you. Hallelujah. Now give us eyes to see and ears to hear that we can learn your word together as a family. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to welcome all of our partners back into the 11th hour today. And um, this is is already, it's just a spirit-led program. That's what it is. And we call it a program because we don't know what else to really call it. But it's spirit-led. What we're doing is spirit-led. And it was, uh, the 11th hour was born in a time when people were confused and we were heading into a great confusion. I, um, I remember in 2016, in 2016, the Lord said there was a sickness coming to the earth. It was a sickness that would make the nations tremble. And... Um, That was in 2016, I think September 7th, maybe. And then in April 30th, 2019, he he began to talk about it again and said it would be uh, an epidemic type thing. And I couldn't, I didn't know the word pandemic. And so uh, Robin said, an epidemic maybe. I said, yes. I kept saying pestilence, plague, something is coming. Unscrupulous people, men will take, uh, take advantage of it. And so they did. So the Lord has, the 11th hour was, was born in a time of spiritual war. And, and it's still there, still moving forward. And the train is picking up speed and power. Uh, you know, we've talked about the Jesus train before, but I've never heard the train sound that forceful before. It just started coming out. And Judah, my guitar that I play, it, it's just the wood on it is so special it don't usually just do things like that not like uh some of my others but buddy it did as we say in the south buddy it happened and so that train began to be forceful and i saw that lion conducting that train robin come up here and tell what you were telling me this is this was so awesome what what she saw during that train time i believe it's the perfect moment to tell it Hallelujah. When I when the train uh, sound started, I just was lost in in worship, or yeah. that's lost in the sound. Yes. And all of a sudden, like an old movie, I saw a screen like how they will when the movie's ending and they'll bring up a, a photograph. I, I can see it in my mind, and it was Hitler and his eyes. I knew the train was moving through Germany. And the, um, his eyes got huge, and the train ran over him. And I heard the Lord say, anti-Semitic and anti-Semitism is going, that train's going to run oh, right over him. Wow. That's something. It said, and it was Hitler you saw it run over. Hitler. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, that shows you the spirit that's out in the earth right now, don't it? Hitler, thanks. Man, that was powerful. Wasn't that powerful? And she saw that during that time. And I saw the lion conducting the train. And when you saw that, well, that's about what's about to run over it. You know, they thought they had Israel gone. They thought the world thought Israel was gone. Satan thought he had it totally gone. For 2,000 years, it wasn't even recognized as a nation. And then suddenly in a day, it was reborn. A nation reborn. If you're looking for a sign and a miracle from God, just look at Israel. 
Just look at Israel, 1948. In one day, it came right back. And there ain't nothing going to destroy it. You can just, and listen, just for your information, the church didn't replace them either. This replacement theology is just a bunch of hooey. You know what hooey is? It's bull crap. Now, I want to show you something out of John, St. John 10. And I want to start in verse 1 because this is, I think this is so powerful today said, verily, verily, Jesus said, amen, amen, truly, truly, I'm not lying. I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and he leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Inside this, these verses is hidden prophecy. Inside that is hidden prophecy. Notice it said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold. Now, Jesus is the door. He said, I'm the door. And so he is the door. He's the way. He's the life. He's the only way. Not just a way. He's the only way. And so, but I want you to notice something hidden in the prophetic scripture here. Because the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Anytime you see a testimony of Jesus or you see Jesus uh, saying something, it's the Holy Ghost prophesying, always. And so one one thing inside the prophetic wind, and you can hear it blowing behind me, in this prophetic wind through these scriptures right here, the door into this earth is the womb of a woman. That's the way you come into this door. This is the way it gets in here. This is the way you have legal authority in this earth. Jesus came through that door. But notice he said, anybody that comes up another way. Now, I know he's talking about he's the door, and he is the door and the way. But I want you to notice something. There is a prophetic wind blowing through here. And it's a prophecy of the Antichrist trying to bring the seed, uh, Satan trying to bring the seed of the serpent into this earth. And Satan is not a person and can't have can't be a human no matter how much he wants to be. And so if he comes in, the scripture, Jesus starts talking about him as a stranger's voice. He didn't come through the door. He didn't come through the door. He didn't come through the Lord, and he didn't come through the womb of a woman. Satan wants the seed of the serpent to get into this earth. It's a hybrid seed, and he is trying to bring that to pass as fast as you can watch it happen. He realized that his time is short. And he wasn't expecting Israel to go to war. He wasn't expecting that battle to break out that day. He wasn't expecting this to happen. He he had another plan. But I want you to notice, Jesus said, But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them. He leads them, walking ahead of them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. He keeps talking about this. He said, and a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Now, I want to talk to you about something the Lord spoke to me about this morning. And it's called the silent shepherd. The silent shepherd. Now, whatever ideas that brings up in your thinking, I want you to just track with me here. The silent shepherd. The greatest thing in the kingdom of deception, listen now, is deception. 
The greatest thing in the kingdom of deception is deception. The truth can never be used, never in that kingdom, unless it's diluted or presented in a different perception. Perception is reality in people's world. You see, there is worlds within worlds. There are all kinds of worlds. For instance, let's take a public library for a moment. You know, back before everyone had internet, people would go to the public library because they could use their computers before the internet became so widespread and everybody had access to it. So they would go in there, I remember that, and when not everyone uh, had, had the internet, some people would go into a public library and use their computers. Now, I want you to think on this a minute. You could be, you could have little Johnny over here, and he's researching his bug collection for a science project that he has to present at school. And on the other side of the room, you have a double naught spy. You know, remember that double naught? <laughs> you have a double naught spy on the other side of the room. And he's absolutely looking at something on the other side of the room dealing in some kind of international incident. And inside one library, you have one world, another world, and no one is aware of the world that each one's in. There's worlds within worlds. Whole different worlds in one room. And you don't know how many worlds exist around you on a daily basis. You just have no idea. You've heard this phrase, a worldview. A worldview is perception. There is perception in every single world, in all the worlds, within worlds. There's a perception in each one. There's a private world around you that has its own perception, and it controls every decision you make. I want you to think about that. Because what a man perceives, that's where he lives. If you perceive something to be a certain way, you'll make every decision according to that perception. And the world of deception has to try to, kingdom of deception must control the perception that people live in. If the worldview and perception can be changed in your mind, you will change decisions you make in your own personal world if the worldview and that perception can be changed in your own thinking. In the kingdom of deception, perception is everything. It is the silent shepherd that leads, leads you everywhere it wants you to go. I don't know if that's registering with anybody, but it will if you let it settle in. In the kingdom of deception, I want to say it again, perception is everything. Perception is the silent shepherd that leads you everywhere it wants you to go. Perception is the great thing that, that, that the silent shepherd wants because the world a man perceives is the world he lives in whether it's true or whether it's false. This is how men can live and die believing a lie. Jesus spoke of the voice of the good shepherd, which is him. He calls himself, it's him, it's he. He calls himself the good shepherd. Because he will lay down his life for his sheep. The silent shepherd requires the life of the sheep. The voice of the silent shepherd is the media. The crooked media. It repeats the same narrative over and over and over and over and over and over. I remember uh, a while back. Some of you may remember this, that they did a montage. It was back during, 
I don't know, maybe it was back in the 2020 elections or whatever, but they did this montage of different news broadcast around the nation. And when they played it all back, every one of them almost verbatim said the same thing. You could have taken their narrative on a wave file and edited words and put them all in repeating each other and finishing each other's sentences. And I think somebody even did that to show you they were saying the same things. Because that's the voice of the silent shepherd changing perception of the masses. Now, they did it to change perception. Without a controlled perception, deception loses its power to control. Now, I'll say that again. Without a controlled perception, deception loses its power to control. Controlled perception will cause someone to turn in their friends during a created panic. To change the minds of people is the desire of the Antichrist. Then they follow blindly. It will grow so strong in his time that it was that if it was possible, he would fool the very elect. It will be the time, listen to me close, of the gouging out of Samson's eyes. The greatest way the Philistines could control uh, or could be saved from Samson's great strength was to control what he could see. Well, wake up, Samson. The Philistines are upon you. Now, people wonder what's going on. They also, you know, with brilliant minds, look for reasons at why all of this stuff is happening in the world and so forth. They blame it on votes as the motive. Oh, God, you know, they're just wanting votes and all of this. Look at the hand while the other's doing something else. What is happening to Israel is what I'm speaking of. Let's look at Israel and this situation. Turkey, a member of NATO, speaking out against Israel, calling Netanyahu a vampire, a blood-sucking vampire. They are a member of NATO with a huge military force backing them. They constantly speak against Israel. I, I stand with the Palestinians, and yet the United States nor anyone else is speaking out against them or telling Erdogan to shut up. Why? Ireland, Norway, and Spain, along with others, recognizing a Palestinian state, one must ask why. And why is the United States saying nothing? Obama gave Iran billions in cash. Biden gave Iran billions. Hamas attacks Israel on October 7th. Birds of prey in paragliders coming across the border and proceeds to mutilate Israelis. Raping, ravaging, murdering, dismembering beheading babies, holding them down and cutting their heads off. And yet nations want to reward them with their own state for this. While Turkey is clearly on their side, and while an arm of the United Nations issues arrest warrants for Benjamin Netanyahu and his war chief, Yet, there's no outcry to watch the ambassador of Israel to the United Nations cry out in frustrations in the war as they remain silent and would rather support terrorists than stand with Israel. How does this happen? Can't you feel the frustration? How? The 
president of Iran, a chief terrorist dies in a helicopter crash and America sends condolences? Go figure that. The UN has a moment of silence for this butcher of Tehran. Hamas still has hostages. What is left alive? They brutalize them daily. Yet everyone screams for Israel to stop the war. Well then, if Hamas wants the war to stop, why don't they release the hostages? Lay down their weapons. The world is gathering against Israel and violating every ethical value known to do it. This world, this would never happen if there was not a unilateral agenda taking place, at least by the top people involved. Who are they? I don't know. We watch how many laws are broken to try Donald Trump in, a lower, in lower Manhattan. We ask, how could this be? How? Why? Why did Biden smile with what the news media even is calling a wicked smile and say no one is above the law while his son Hunter walks free? Biden smiled as he walked away, signaling to American people that we, we and his people did this. However, if this was about real votes and gaining votes for an election, Biden would have stopped and, uh, uh, and stepped forward and said, this is a farce, therefore I pardon Trump. If it was about votes, that would have gained him a lot. That would have made him a hero, would have made Biden a hero, but it's not about votes. Then what is it about? When the Ukraine farce happened, Biden made a statement that should be remembered by everyone. He said, there is going to be a new world order and we are going to lead it. Does anybody even remember that? I do. One woman of the Ukrainian officials said, we must be ready for this new world order so we know that the Ukraine was about the new world order. They made Ukraine the balancing scales for the world. If you didn't support the Ukraine against Russia, then you were judged evil. By the moves made in Ukraine, you could hear the bear begin to moan as a hook was being pushed through his jaw. Now something should be realized. Politics is not the highest thing you deal with. Now you need to really hear that. Politics is not the highest thing you deal with. In Matthew 4, Satan said to Jesus, see all these kingdoms, which include the nations. He said, Satan said, these were given to me, and I'll give them to whoever I will. Satan went on to say, I'll give them to you if you will bow to me. Of course, Jesus said, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. But notice Satan said, all these kingdoms were given to me. When nations and kingdoms begin to raise up, uh, rise up in this way, there is a satanic push behind it. There's always a satanic push behind it. You have to start looking at the world of the spirit. I remember when uh, people used to, I used to try to tell people around me that, that we, in just my own circles, I, they talk about politics and they get hung up on politicians and politics. I said, there's something far more sinister happening here. I said, I, I, uh, we're acting like that politicians are just doing it on their own. I said, there's something far more sinister. There's a dark world behind something. You wrestle against, not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in the heavenlies. But notice it said rulers of the darkness of this world. That means to make something look one way when it's another way. That's what the rulers of the darkness of this world do. And so it's a world to change perception. 
Satan is behind the whole mess. And he has people that are working for him. Operatives. Some know what they're doing. Some do not know what they're doing. They're just following the money. Because the love of money is the root of all evil. So Satan dangles it like a carrot out in front of stupid people. And leads them along to do whatever he wants. And the masses of people in the world don't do anything. They don't know what to do because their world perception has been changed. And they're making their decision according to the perception that's going on around them. And now we find out it's just breaking all over the news how Fauci and people like that. All this stuff about six feet apart and children wearing masks that, that hurt them and all this kind of stuff was all a farce. But it was the perception of people would turn people in, turn their friends in if they didn't follow this perception. But now, ah, we didn't know that. We didn't do that. And yet one, one congressman after another calling him out on it. But I didn't do that. Now something, you have to realize that. The highest echelon on this whole global reset is Satan and Satan worship. Now you say, well, how many people are involved in that? Who knows? God knows. But I'm going to tell you, and the shadow don't know. Some of you will remember that. And so it's, it's Satan. It's his worship. It's his world. It's his dark world trying to bring in the seed of the serpent. And he's controlling people like puppets. But he's got people in real high places that may go way beyond people you're thinking of. That are tapping into a dark world. Notice they wanted to harness dark matter. They wanted to know in this last eclipse about darkness and the dark matter and all of this. Everything, there's something going on to try to bring in a new reset. And politicians most don't even have a clue. This is the closest they have come to unifying the nations against Israel right now and bring in a world leader to suddenly to make peace See, suddenly, all of a sudden, it's ripe if a man stepped up on the scene and just brought peace. Oh, maybe even sign a peace treaty. Some of you are getting that. You understand the goal and the plan to achieve it. If you can let yourself go beyond politics and see Satan organizing nations, then you understand the goal and the plan to achieve it. The goal is to bring in the Antichrist, be the very one who will give Satan a back, eyebrows, and skin. And I can imagine somebody right now that hears this, that knows, is just madder than a wet hen because they don't think anybody would know this. But there are those that know. Make no mistake, this is the goal. They know it too. To usher in the great tribulation period before the time. If Satan can accomplish this, then he will defeat God and trap the world forever in the great tribulation. The goal. Now the means they must unify the nation. That's the goal. Now, the means to do this, they must unify the nations. To do this, they must have a balancing scale on which to weigh them. Therefore, the Ukraine was chosen and chosen on purpose. This would accomplish two major objections to be reached in order to reach the goal of the new world order. Ukraine would become the balancing scales on which to judge and weigh the nations, but also this would accomplish the way to get rid of one of the opponents of the satanic plan in order to bring the plan to pass. Three people would have to be removed. One of them was Vladimir Putin. They can't fix the votes and get rid of him. So they have to make him so hated that someone would kill him and remove him. So the Ukraine would accomplish this and make him the most hated man in all the world. They had Netanyahu gone, but he came back. And they had to get rid of Trump. 
See, politics is the greatest place for deception. This is why it's so sought after by the devil. I hope that helps somebody. And that's just, that's, uh, people say, well, you're not a politician. Thank God. Thank God I'm not. I don't want that job. Well, how, how do you know this and this and this? Because I know the one who knows it all. I don't watch news. I don't, I don't watch much of anything like that. Biggest thing I look at, Robin tells me, because I'll look at, at a war documentary or, or the only old program I like is that old program Combat. I'll watch it sometime. And it's all for different reasons than you might think. I'll watch the story of David. I, I, I study things like that. I study strategic moves out of the Scripture. And the Holy Ghost talks to me. Now, you, you know, uh, people used to accuse me. They'd say, oh, he's got equipment in the back of that church that can see around the world. You know, when they were accusing me of that, I couldn't afford much over a VHS camera unless somebody bought it for us. It was the Spirit of God would tell me things. And the Spirit of God is speaking to all the prophets right now. And it's all coming out into the open. And there's a thousand fires burning everywhere, revealing truth. And there's no way to stop them all. So certain ones are stopped in order to create an example. And it creates the perception that everyone's afraid. Well, don't be afraid because God's not afraid. He's not afraid. None of this scares him. Nothing scares him and nothing's changed on his plan. You need to remember that. Nothing has changed. Oh, brother. Oh, I, I would, you know, I wouldn't say all those things. I know that. Maybe you're not called to say all those things. But some people are. And there's politicians that are good politicians. I know people find that hard to believe. But there are. And they're speaking up and people are trying to gag them too. But you can't gag the Holy Ghost. And you have to remember that men are flesh and blood. And they breathe. God lives outside of time. And he can never die. He's the creator of all. And in him we move, live, move, and have our being. And people forget this stuff. But God is merciful. And God gives everyone opportunity to repent. And all they have to do is call on the, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's what it said, whoever. Man, I don't know I will even want to save this person. Well, it ain't up to you who you save. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord. Man, I tell you, I hate that Putin guy. Well, did you know he could call on the name of the Lord if he ain't born again and God would save him? He would, he would give him a brand new life. Oh, I don't believe God would do that. Don't go telling God who he'll save. Don't start that crap. Don't start that mess with God. You're going to get to heaven one of these days, and you're going to find out there's a lot of people there that you didn't think, oh, my God, how'd they get here? And then you're going to get to heaven and find out you're going to be looking, where's so-and-so? He didn't make it. What? Don't start that with God. Hallelujah. People say, well, if he don't do something quick and judge America, he's going to have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm going to tell you, you better watch how, who you tell God he has to apologize to. He don't have to apologize to nobody because he don't make mistakes. You understand that? Well, hallelujah, that's enough to make every dog in the junkyard madder than hell. So let me go ahead and get Krista up here and, and, and tell us how to prosper. Oh, Brother Rubin, you just, you're just a crude talking prophet. Oh, no, you need to go back and read how Elijah taught. Go back and read how some of these other prophets spoke, and you'll find out. Go back and read Ezekiel, uh, uh, Hosea, people uh, like that, and find out how they spoke. You know, at least I, you know, Isaiah went around with, without any pants on for a long time to make a prophetic statement. Well, that's pretty, that's pretty bold. That's a lot worse than saying hell. 
Have you ever noticed everything I say like that? I mean it literally. Every time. Say, well, you cussed. I trained myself to. I trained myself to use the proper words in the proper context. Literally. Hallelujah. Come on, Krista. Well. You know, I hadn't, hadn't thought about things like that quite like that before. That, and of course, we know these things, but we, hadn't, we just have to give it a purposeful thought like um, everything. I only do what I see my father do. I only say what I hear my father say. So I'm sitting over there thinking, of course, everything he said, he heard his father say it. You mean every word? Yes, every word. Every word or he wouldn't have been, he'd, he'd have been lying about it if it wasn't. And he don't lie. And so he, everything he said, he heard the father say. Because I'm just going to be straight up with you, man. You know, a lot of people, if, if you're only doing what you, you do, you be easier on yourself. But when you say what the father says, he's trusting the father. And you know what he said? He said, nobody takes my life. I'll lay it down. I'll take it again. And bless God, that's what he did. I mean now, so saying what the Father says is the safest place in the world is the, to be. That's how you maintain control. Hallelujah. So, yes, and I was over there thinking about this, and I thought, when you was talking about the stand-up comedians, I thought, Jesus said, you strain out gnats and swallow camels. Now, you know, that's pretty, that's pretty, that's pretty tough. I mean, think about what that what was said. You strain out gnats and swallow camels. Whoa. And don't I mean the father told him that. <laughs> That's something. <laughs> wow. You just go back and look at those things. Well, you know, today's a good day to get saved. If you're not born again, you you really need to do that. That is required to go to heaven. And you're not going to heaven if you're not born again. I don't care how good you are. I don't care if you've helped 5,300 old ladies across the street. I don't care how many turtles and animals you've got out and moved out of the middle of the highway. I don't care how much you've done, how much you've given, whatever you've done. It counts nothing to go to heaven. That's not what gets you to heaven is your works. What gets you to heaven is receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Because when you do that, you deny all other things that are called God. You deny every other way that people say that can take you to heaven. Jesus is not a spoke, one spoke, and a big wheel of spokes all leading to one person, God. That's just crap. Jesus is the only way, the only door, the only truth, the only life. St. John 14, 6, you better understand that. And the scripture says this in Romans 10, 9 and 10, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, the Lordship of Jesus, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, not Buddha, not Mohammed, not Krishna, not Reverend Moon, no one else. He raised Jesus from the dead. And you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and you confess with your mouth that he's your Lord, you'll be saved. That's what Paul said to do. So right now, why don't you do that? Why don't you go ahead and do that? Has nothing to do with Sheba being Lord. Has nothing to do with all these Hindu demons who claim to be God. There's only one way. And there's only one God. The God of Abraham. The God of Isaac. The God of Jacob the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the King of glory, God in the flesh. Now, that's the only God. So right now, why don't you stop where you are? Hadn't you called on a loser God long enough? you like the prophets of Baal. Oh, Baal, send the fire. Oh, Baal, send the fire. Okay, okay well, right, let's cut ourselves and see if, he'll, if this will impress him. Well, it didn't because he was a rock. And so nothing came. Elijah prayed a 63-word prayer, and the fire came from a portal in heaven and consumed that offering, burned up the sacrifice, burned up the altar, licked up the water in the ditch around it, <clears throat> and, shut, and everybody fell on their knees and said, The Lord, He is the God. 
So today you can know the God. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. And I confess with my mouth that you are my Lord and Savior. From this day forward, I follow you and you alone. Forgive me of all sin. Cleanse my consciousness of all sin. Make me new. Take my life. Do something with it. Hallelujah. And I'm going to tell you something. You prayed that prayer, you covered your bases. And now you belong to him if you meant it. If you meant that prayer. You can't just say it. You have to mean it. And if you mean it, then welcome to the family because you just became a child of the living God. Also, uh, <clears throat> well, I was going to get somebody to hand me that book. But also I want to tell you that you need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And the Holy Ghost is the power you need. You need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> you don't need to, to mess around with all these other things looking for power. God gave you His Son, His Word, and His Spirit. What more is there? So you just simply say this, Jesus, baptize me in the mighty Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Other tongues scares the devil out of his wet underwear. I mean, it scares him so bad he don't know what to do. And he streaks through hell naked. <laughs> you know, uh, wherever he's at. He's not in hell yet, but he, he will be. Now, so just say, baptize me in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. And then just start thanking him for that. And then just start speaking in tongues. And all of that right there was something about the love of God. All that message, all that I was praying in tongues was about the love of God. For I'll show you my love, says the Lord, and I will give you more love than you've ever known. I will give you the reason not to kill yourself. I will give you the reason to live. I will be the reason for you to live and not kill yourself. I will be the reason for all your destiny. So I am giving you and showing you my love this day. Take it. Embrace it. I will not fail you, says the Lord. Hallelujah. And I want to give you, if you've received Jesus today, maybe you've, you've received him before, but you don't understand a lot of these things. I would love to give you this book free. It won't automatically put you on a mailing list where we just start sending you things or anything like that. It was simply what it's for. And it's free on a download on the website if you rather get it there. Doesn't matter. And uh, you can download it there and nobody, I guess, will ever know you downloaded it. But, but all I want you to do is have the information. It's called Jesus, Why It Is the Way It Is. And the front of it says, warning, 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 warning. Four warnings. Inside this pamphlet, you will find answers. Read only if you want to know the truth. If you were to ask 500 people about God, you would probably get 500 opinions. However, opinions are like mouths. Everybody has one. The best way to know about God and his plans and thoughts are to go to the Bible. What you are about to read may not be like anything you've ever read before. God is absolutely good. And you can have this free. If you can't download it right to us, we'll send it to you. Amen. And our mailing address, in case you don't know it, is P.O. Box 67, Warrior, Alabama. Warrior, just like the warrior. Warrior. Uh, Alabama, 35180. Amen. Well, until next time, we gather together right here around God's Word. I want you to remember and never forget that God loves you. Jesus loves you. And we love you. And God is absolutely good.
Shalom and Shalom.